Let's say you're designing a website or an app and you want to design this type of sidebar menu that allows you to navigate through the app. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create something like this in Figma from scratch. And uh, here are the six steps that we will go through. At first, we will you know, create the, pa the pages uh, that we will navigate through. Then we will create a menu button component. Then using this menu, uh, menu button component will create the actual, the whole mo module that will be, you know, the whole sidebar. Each of the buttons will be then linked to individual pages. And uh, then we will distribute this module onto these individual pages so that each of these pages can be, contains the menu, which is something that's necessary when, uh, when you want to design a navigation, it needs to be visible everywhere. So let's get into it. Um, at first, I'm going to go ahead and create six frames. The dimensions are going to be 1000 by 600. I'm going to name this page one. And just so that we know what page this is, I'm going to you know place a text saying that this is page one. It's going to be dark gray. It's going to be white. And we need now need to copy this five times. So that's one. Notice how Figma is, uh, you know, very handily copying the number and uh, increasing it by one. Really smart. So let's say this is going to have five pages or six maybe. And I'm going to just edit. Uh, sorry, it's two, three, Okay, so now we have six pages. Each of them is labeled by the number inside it so that we know when we navigate around that we arrived at the correct page. Good, now we can move on, on to the next step. We will be creating a button component. Uh, that's going to be the actual button that you, you then can click. Uh, there will be one for each page. I'm going to start by using the text tool and typing it in, uh, let's say, page page. I'm going to use a different font because this type of font is not great for user interfaces, in my opinion. So I'm going to add auto layout. Uh, first, I'm going to change the size of this to around 16, maybe 18. Uh, Shift A to add auto layout. Horizontal padding is going to be around 20. So the contents of this auto layout are going to be left aligned so that we can, you know, increase the size and the font uh, that the text remains on the left side. The button is going to have three states. The first state is going to be default. The second one is going to be hover and the third one is going to be active. So right now, we have only the, the default one. I'm going to go here and click create component. I'm going to create a new property called, let's say state. And at first this is going to be default. Then we want to add the second one, uh, hover and another one active. We also have to define that interaction when you actually hover over the button that is going to change to the hover state. So I'm going to go to prototype here, select this and connect it to the second one, which is hover. And this is not going to be on click, but while hovering, maybe we want to do dissolve kind of quick, 150 milliseconds. Um, you know, that's just so that it transitions nicely and it's isn't just a flash. Let's say that um, the default one is not going to have any background and uh, the hover one is going to have a 15% opacity or 20% opacity black background. And also the font, you know, all of these is going to be white because we will be placing it on a dark background. All right, so this one, uh, this one is active and we want to differentiate it somehow. So when you actually are on a page, you want the button to have kind of to symbolize that, that it's active. Actually, we don't have to go too far to find an example. Uh, we can have a look right here. Do you see these tools here? You know, right now we know that this tool is being selected. And when we select the rectangle tool, it highlights the tool into blue. So some, something like this, we want to do that. That's, you know, to show the user what's currently being, what's currently active. So I like the design of YouTube Studio the way that YouTube Studio goes about you know, highlighting these buttons. I noticed that they have a border on the left side when it's active and it's red. 
So let's do that. Let's try it out. And let's say that it's going to, instead of the black background, it's going to have a white one. And here's an important thing. It's going to have a nice glow. So radial, radiant, with this color. Again, this color. So it's going to be transparent. It's going to originate from the left side. And um, maybe it's going to have 10% opacity. We can always change that. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. So we do have the interaction ready. We do have three states that we need. Right now, uh, we can move on to step number three. And that says create the menu component using, you know, the button components. If we go to assets, we have the menu button right here. I'm going to use it. Here. So obviously right now, whenever we make a change here, uh, it affects all the instances of the component. That's the way that the components work. Um, I'm going to copy that. How many pages do we have? We have six pages, I think, right? Yes, six. That's six. I'm going to select all of them and press Shift A. That way we have a auto layout and also if we increase the size of the whole menu sidebar we want these buttons to stay at the center and we can do that by clicking here you can choose you know where it's kind of placed so now when we change the size it always stays in the middle and that's what we want to do sidebar is going to have background it's going to be black with partial opacity around 70%. We can always change this later. It's just we have to test and see what, what works best. And also it would be nice if we named these, right? So we have page one all the way through page six. Good, now we can turn this again into a component. So we have two components. We have the menu button and the menu. Uh, maybe we could name this, this, you know, sidebar, sidebar menu. So what we need to do now is again, create a new property that's going to be called a uh, page, basically. Uh, and let's say that this is page zero, that th th this is no page. When no page is selected, um, you will see later why we need this version. Now we need to define what happens when you click individual buttons. So obviously we want to be able when we click page number one here, when we click this, we want to be able to go to page one, you know, and the same with all the other buttons, with all the other pages. So I'm just going to select the very first button, go to prototype here, and then click and drag onto these individual pages for each of these buttons. So Figma knows, or wherever you use this component, when you click the number, you know, button number four, it's going to take you to page number four. That's something we want, so yeah. Good, right now we can take this and create a new version, a new variant, sorry. And it's going to be called page one, page one. This is going to be zero, this is one, and then this is going to be two, three, four, five, and six. Obviously on each page, we want the page that we are currently on, we want the button to be highlighted. So I'm gonna select each of these and then highlight the corresponding, you know, corresponding button. So we will select the state active on page one. So right now when we will go to page one, this is what we will see. Page two, page three, page four, page five, and page six. And also, I think we could, you know, make the font on the non-selected uh, buttons a little bit smaller. So let's say 16, or even on the, you know, remaining ones, I think 16. Uh, yeah, and also a bit more transparent. Let's say like this, 50% opacity, something like that. Okay, uh, good. So now you can see that if we select any of these, all of these buttons now lead to each of these pages in all of these variants. So that's why we defined it, you know, on the first one. Uh, that, that way we don't have to do this, you know, so many times. And we are now ready to use this component, I think, and place them on each of these pages. We will do that by 
again going to assets and I'm going to place the menu here and we will increase the size like so I'm going to select the correct, correct uh, variant so this is page one and the selected version is going to be version one I'm going to press command C to copy and then select all of the remaining pages and press command V. That way we pasted all of these menus onto all these pages and we need to fix, you know, we need to make sure that when we are on page three, the, there's the version three, four, five, six. Good, and now let's test, let's test this. Okay, so we are on the first page and when we hover over these it changes but I think we could make you know the background change a little bit more when you hover over these. So let's go back and actually you know now the only thing we have to do is go to the menu button component and change that here and that updates the button everywhere which is a really good way to you know design things because then it's way easier to fix anything uh, globally. Yeah, I'd say this looks good. Maybe we can even make it, you know, completely, completely black. Yeah, I think that works. Cool, so now it's being highlighted when we hover over and when we click it takes us to a different page. When we click number two it takes us to number two. Yeah, so that's it. We are done here. Um, so remember it's always better to use components as much as possible to be able to edit and make changes easily. Um, this is the process that you can apply to not just the sidebar menu, but any uh, navigation type of thing in our app. So I, um, I hope that you learned something new. I hope this has been useful. And if it was, uh, leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Uh, I do quite a lot of tutorials on UX and UI design in Figma. So if you like this, uh, you can, you know, be on the outlook for more. So uh, yeah, uh, thank you for joining me today and um, have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.